With this tutorial, we're going to go over some troubleshooting techniques in Adobe After Effects. I'm going to familiarize you with some terms, so this will help you with troubleshooting effects as you move forward. This button right here will toggle on and off the transparency view. The checkerboards you see are the alpha, what is transparent with this image. I'm going to turn this off. So you see there's transparency all around. That's the alpha. Now, the shape inside here, that's the positive space. And this red box you see around it is called the bounding box. So even though I've got all this transparency around this shape and the letter A is a triangle, it will always make a rectangle or a square to set the bounding box showing the full amount of space that what's inside this is used by the program. So just bear in mind, there's this invisible box that hugs around the shape even when there's transparency. That's your bounding box and the transparency is your alpha. And by now you should be familiar with the term pre-comp. Pre-comp is to pre-compose things and you do that by selecting one or more layers in your timeline, right clicking and choosing pre-compose. And almost all the time you're pre-composing, you're gonna to want to move all attributes by clicking the move all attributes button and you can rename it. I usually put PC at the end so I know it's a pre-comp and then click OK. And now you see I've got a pre-comp layer. That's how you create a pre-comp. Pre-comps are very useful when you're working with mats because mats are one layer revealing another layer. And if you've got multiple layers making up that mat or the reveal, pre-comps are the way to troubleshoot that. Now I'm going to undo this pre-comp I made and I'm back to my text layer. I'm going to apply CC light rays to this and I'm going to move the origin point of the light rays. And I want you to observe what's happening. The effect is being cut off by the bounding box. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to pre-compose my letter now. And you see the red bounding box is gone and now I've got markers at the edges of the screen. So if I throw light rays on now and I move that point, the effect is working properly. It is not being cut off by the bounding box. The trick to making that work was to pre-compose the letter to override that bounding box. I'm going to delete this letter now. With that quick overview out of the way, I'm now going to create a solid layer. Solid layers are good for putting effects on them and you can set the size for them or just force them to be the size of the composition. Shape layers you can apply effects to, but those have path points that you can alter over time. I'm going to be using a shape layer for the plugin Saber because Saber works off of masks, not paths. So I'm going to add Saber to this shape layer and it defaults to going between two points like a lightsaber. Okay, that's the default. You can get as complex with this as you want as long as you realize Saber works off of masks, not path points. Okay, I'm going to use my shape tool with the layer selected and draw a star. Now remember, you have to have the layer selected when you use your shape tools or the pen tool to create a mask. So now I've got my mask and there's the default beam that Saber uses. I'm going to go to customize core. Saber is this over here, the default, and I'm going to choose layer masks. Now you see the effect going around the star, which is the shape of the mask that we chose. So this is just the beginning step. I'm going to move my playhead and you're not going to see much of a change. Under preset is a massive list of effects that were already stylized. I'm going to move my playhead and now you can see the animation taking place without any keyframes. So experiment with your library and look for effects that you like. That's one of the uses of presets. It's a good jumping off point for visual effect. Now I'm going to delete this mask by selecting the timeline and hitting backspace and it's back to the default saber setting. I now have a layer of type. If I select my solid layer, select the effect, copy it and paste it onto my type and then hide the layer below it, this is what happens. So I've still got my customized core open and here's my drop down options. If I turn it back to saber, you've got the points taking place. If I choose layer masks, there aren't any. And then once I choose text layer, I've got text layer options. If I choose hello, and then the source, 
and I start moving this around, you start to see the text and it's defaulting to the top of the corner as what it's reading from the effect. So I'm going to undo that. I'm just showing you why it went wrong. And I'm going to delete that effect from the text by selecting it and choosing delete in the effect panel. I'm back in my timeline. I right click on the text and there's create. I can make shapes or masks from this text and it'll keep the text. I'm going to choose masks. There's my text. It's hidden and here's the outlines for it. Shapes are useful if you're going to be animating shape paths or using those to create alpha mats. But for this, we already know we need masks for this to work. I'm going to paste that saber effect into the mask layer. And it automatically recognized these masks. And you can see it animating around when I move my playhead. Now, you've got the bare idea of what this program can do. I'm going to show you something a little more intricate. So here's my H and here's my mask path for the H. I just twirled down my menu options to get there. Move my playhead to where I want my animation to start. Click my stopwatch and move forward a little bit. Now this is a clean, perfect keyframe for the letter H. That's important. You always want to have a clean keyframe to go back to when you're distorting a letter. So watch what happens here. I held down the shift key so that I could deselect that one point and now I'm going to hold down shift to select another one. I'm going to expand that out. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to select these points using the shift key. Move that down. Move forward in time. Move these path points. Move forward in time. And change those. So watch what happens. Since the layer masks was selected, that worked. Watch what happens if I choose text layer, then hello. It's reading the default mask, but not the animation for it. So if you change the shape of your layer mask over time, make sure you have it set to layer masks. And now you see it working off of the path that you animated. So you can animate and morph your mask paths. Make sure it's set to that layer mask and the effect will follow even as you change the shape of the path. So now you know how to apply to a basic mask or converting text to a mask. Now let's focus on dialing in the effect a little bit with the glow. I'm in my project panel. When you're working with light effects, and this is considered a light effect because it uses glows, you want to change your bits per channel. It should always be at 32 bits per channel. And you get there by holding down the Alt or Option and clicking on it. So first I'll go to 16, then you do it again, and now you have 32 bits per channel. And you'll get more high dynamic range inside your glow. Now when you're working with an effect, I always go big and I make a drastic change and then I dial down to make it more subtle. So if I increase my spread, it's thinning out the effect because the spread is going too far. So now I know I can make it that if I want or add a little bit more glow based off of that. Then the bias you see is bleeding too much into the glow and if you go too low, there's not that nice halo around it. So I'm going to undo that. The core size. If you dial it down too low, the entire effect disappears. The core will activate the amount of distortion and distress you see around the letters. Always remember the numbers that you started off with so that you can go back to them if you go too far. And don't forget, everything with a stopwatch can be animated over time. Just click that stopwatch. Move your playhead and make a change. We've covered trim paths before with shape layers. And that would be my offset here. You can trim path on this effect, should you choose to, by choosing which end you want to start at. The start offset or the end offset. Okay, that's how you get your trim path. So let's just say for this, we want this to animate on like we did and then animate off. So I'm going to do my end offset, click that stopwatch, move forward in time, and then set it to whatever amount I want to get rid of the trim path. I'll do a full one 
and then I'll have a drawback on by clicking the other stopwatch and then animating that one. So zoom out a little bit using the mouse wheel and there's our animation taking place. Even though these are mask paths, not shape paths, it has a built-in trim path, which is your offset. So you still can get those nice write-on effects using it. Now, when you see start size and end size, that is the tapering. So if I decrease that, it's gonna start off thinner and get thicker over time. So I could even increase my end size. See, now I've got a nice razor edge here and it gets thicker towards the end. You could keyframe animate that as well, should you choose to. Or you can keep them both set to 100 for an even stroke around. And you see how that affects the effect as well as the animation. You're getting more glow and distress off of the side where it's thicker and less off the side where it's thinner. Next, I'm going to show you the distortion part. There's a glow distortion and a core distortion. Let's look at the core first. We'll zoom in. This is using the default dropdown of smoke, getting this nice, lovely look. There's three choices. There's fluid and energy. That didn't change the effect too much. So I'm going to go back there and now I'm going to go to the distortion for the glow and watch the glow part. This is set to fluid. Here's the distortion type. Let's try smoke. See how that gave us a completely different look. And there's energy. So I can customize the distortion of the smoke coming off of the core. And you could also mess around with your wind speed settings. See, that changes the distress around it. It's all about, and if you want it to move faster, that's obviously the speed of your wind. You want to slow it down, slow down the speed of your wind. It's all about dialing in and experimenting with these settings and knowing what they do. We know that this outer smoke is part of the glow because when we adjusted the core, it didn't do anything to it. So all those adjustments would be under the glow. And lastly, I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. I'm going to hit the space bar. My machine's fairly fast, but you can see the render's taking a little bit of time. If you're in a time crunch, right here's where you change your preview resolution so you can check out your animation faster. I sent it from full resolution to quarter. Now I'm going to hit the space bar and look how fast it's previewing it four times as much because I'm looking at the motion of my design rather than going and fine tuning the look of it. That's when I would use my high res and just look at it at different sections. I'm going to pause it there by hitting the space bar. I'm going to preview the alpha. And we can see that alpha has been disabled. That's showing what it looks like with the mask glow, core, like such. So if I want this to be transparent over something, I'm going to make a new solid below it, just so you can see what's going to happen. And I'm going to make this blue. Here's my blue solid. I'm going to put it below it. And I changed the blending mode that I have the layer on to screen, because when I set it to screen, that's going to ignore pure black and leave what's below it. That's why I always put my light effects on a black layer, so that I could just use the screen blending mode to make it have the alpha that I need. So you can put this over video or whatever you want, and now it's transparent. I'm going to press the U key so you can see all my keyframes. And don't forget, if you want to get smoother, more professional motion, select all your keyframes. Right-click Assistant, Keyframe Assistant, and Easy Ease your keyframes to get a better motion in and out of them. And there you have the finished result. Now, if I were to use this as a callout, I'm going to hide this layer. We're going to review everything. Pretend this is your video clip, the blue. I'm going to put a new solid over top of it. Make sure it's black for the blending mode. And I'll call this Saber. Make comp size. Hit OK. And if I throw Saber on here, I'm going to put these layers we're not using below it. So if I put Saber on my black solid, it's going to default to that beam 
which is under your custom core saver. We're going to use a mask. Remember, you have to have the layer selected. This time I'm going to use the pen tool. And we're going to pretend we have an elliptical draw on happen. So I'm going to make my points. I'm not going for pretty. I'm just going for showing you how to fix this up. So what had happened here was I got a straight point instead of a Bezier curve point. I fixed that by going to my convert for a text tool. So this is going to be the shape for a sample draw on highlight call out. It's still recognizing the saber. I'm going to select the layer and hit the M key. And you see it right there. There's our mask. So if I go to layer masks, now it's going to follow that mask shape. And we already know start offset is the trim path. So it's going to come from that end point. So animating the start offset, it'll come from the second point and close around the first. And if we animate the end, it'll start from the first point and go to the last. That's the look I want. This is just for my example I'm giving you. I'm going to click the stopwatch after I've moved the playhead. So I move the playhead, click that stopwatch, and go to whatever time I want it. Let's say up there, make it 100%. And now we've got that lovely draw on, just like it was a trim path. We've still worked in the 32-bit color space. And now I can start messing around with my drop-down preset settings. And I'll just do kryptonite just for a different example. And that's what that call out looks like. So I could adjust my settings or animate them over time. And then say I want to mess around with the distortion of this. Let's see what happens if we go to the core first. You're going to get different results with each preset that you use. So that's why it's all about experimentation when you're working with effects. See what happens now? You can notice it more. It's flying off the side more like liquid coming off. So I'm going to distort that a little bit less. And here's our type. There's energy. Let's try smoke. See, now we're starting to see a difference in this. Let's try fluid. See? Completely different look that you're making more customized based off of your presets. Now, let's change the wind direction. And that's going to affect the glow. And we're going to lower the noise speed a little bit. I can make this even more complex if I want. I can increase the complexity, should I choose to. Now I can start dialing in the look for my glow, which is what's popping off the sides of the core. Set to fluid. Let's try smoke. Let's try energy. So I'm going to do energy. And you're already seeing how you can get your own customized looks. Now I'm adjusting the wind direction. So find something similar to what you want and then make it your own just to help it stand out a little bit more. And let's try the noise bias. Change that up a little bit. And lastly, before I preview that, I'm going to change the color. And that's right here under glow color. Let's say we want this to be more blue. Now the whole effect has the color of what we want. And the last step would be to change the blending mode to screen. So it shows over top of the video of the screen recording. So that's tying it all together, adjusting the presets and then experimenting with them to get the look that you want. And remember, go big with your changes, see what it does, then dial it down to make it more subtle for the look that you want. And that's how you can go from a straight out of the box custom preset to making it a little bit more original and your own and also to tie into your project or visual effect better as well.